Hey guys, Rob here with EY Gaming and welcome to part 2 of our guide to setting up Streamlabs OBS. Today we'll be covering the output settings and how you can set these up to get the best quality possible for your hardware. So there's three main factors that you need to be considering when setting these up. These factors are the game you're playing, the hardware that's in your PC, and then your personal preference with regards to quality and game experience. What I'll do today is show you how you can adjust these settings and make it suit your bitrate and hardware as best as possible. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is head on over to the settings button in Streamlabs OBS and then click on output on this left hand panel. So initially you'll be presented with the simple mode and we want to change that to advanced which basically opens up all of the options so we can properly tailor these to your PC setup. So the first thing you're going to want to choose is your encoder. So there's three different options at the moment for encoding. The first one is software encoding which basically uses your CPU. Then we have hardware encoding which if you've got an Nvidia graphics card will use NVENC. But it's a really good option for a single PC setup basically because of the quality that offers with a minimal impact on performance. For the purpose of this video, I'm gonna start with X264 in this option, and we'll just go through these settings and then I'll show you how it changes with NVNC. So once you've selected X264, you wanna make sure you've selected Enforce Stream Service Encoder settings. This will just make sure that any of these settings at the bottom like profile and tune are correct for the service you've selected. So you can see over in your stream panel, if you selected Twitch, that could be different to what it is for Mixer or YouTube. So it's worth having that checked just to make sure you don't have any issues with the stream once it goes live. So you want to leave rescaling the output unticked uh, as we can do this in the video option anyway and have it set at 720p. For rate control you want to have this set to CBR if you're streaming on Twitch. Uh, this can differ sometimes depending on the service you're using but for Twitch it has to be set to CBR. And then for bitrate so if you're a non-partner streamer the max bitrate that you're going to be able to stream at is 6000 which is basically six megabyte per second upload. And at this speed, you're gonna be wanting to target sort of 720p, 60 FPS, maybe 900p, depending on the setup that you've got. I generally recommend sticking to sort of 720p at this bit rate, but I do know people have gone up to 900p and it does look a little bit better, but it can be a little bit more intensive on your PC. So it's worth bearing in mind. And generally for this encoder, you'd wanna be using a dual PC setup anyway. Then we move on to CPU usage. So for CPU usage, basically you've got a wide variety of options here. The lower you go in this list, the more CPU power it will basically take. So generally for a single PC setup, you wanna be keeping this on very fast. Very fast is kind of the sweet spot where it still looks okay, but it doesn't take up too much uh, CPU. If you start going down to medium, especially on a single PC, you'll find that you're using around sort of 40% of your CPU, depending on what it is. You can see down here in the left, it will show you exactly how much CPU you're using. So actually, we might it might not show. If I change that now, if I change that now and hit record, it will probably spike quite high. There we go, 17%. And that's literally 17% of the CPU being used just to show this image. If we start changing between panels, 29.9, .9, you can see it sort of spikes up and down and that's not what you want when you're playing games. It's just spiked to 57% there. So yeah, it's definitely one you wanna be careful with. If you select it as very fast and we go back to recording again, that should stay fairly low. It will probably go up to about 15 at a maximum when you're actually playing a game. But you can see at the moment, jumping between tabs, compared to when it was on medium, I mean, we're sticking around, we're actually sticking below 10% CPU. So you can see how you just want to test that out depending on your processor. In this PC, we've got an 8700K, an Intel i7. It's fairly well equipped to deal with that sort of level of encoding. I think if you wanted to do anything slower, you would need to be looking at having like a 9900K or a Threadripper or one of the newer Ryzen uh, CPUs if you wanted to go down to sort of these settings. Uh, the other thing I was gonna show you was the NVNC settings. So if we go to NVNC new, you'll see the window changes very slightly. So your bitrate again, you wanna change to 6000 if you can run that 
keyframe interval you want to have as two preset so this is one of the interesting things with nvnc as well you have a wide variety of presets that will basically adapt how the graphics card does the encoding depending on what you select so if you go with max quality you're going to notice obviously much higher quality potentially at a slight um, performance hit though i found with nvnc the best way to use it is have a frame rate cap on so for me when i'm streaming i want it to look good for the viewers and i don't mind setting capping my fps to like 60 fps to have that better looking stream um, so i would generally go with max quality and then limit my in-game fps to 60 and that just ensures it's kind of like a constant so where the game's not changing massively it's not going to impact the stream too much if you suddenly go into like a really intense scene in the game sometimes and you've not got your fps limited you'll notice the game fps dropping and then obviously that can have an effect on the stream as well so it's good to try and keep it a uh, constant and uh, limit the in-game FPS if possible. And also here you have options for max performance. So if you don't mind the stream looking a little bit worse and you want to ensure you've got the best game experience for yourself, then max performance is definitely the, the option to go with. Again, the difference between them is fairly minimal. You'll want to have a little test and see what you think of both. So the profile for this is automatically set to high which I think, again, as long as you have this selected, if it needs to be changed to main, then it will change it. Um, but yeah, just make sure that's selected at the top. And then here you have options for look ahead and psycho visual tuning. So these are two features that were introduced with this new NVNC encoder. Uh, for look ahead, generally you want to keep that turned off unless you're playing very static games, but it can have a bit of an impact on performance. And it's not the best option if you want to be playing fast paced games. If you're playing fast paced games then psycho visual tuning you definitely want to have turned on and that will basically just adapt the frame rate based on the amount of movement that's happening on the screen so if you're spinning around fast then it will make sure that the, the quality is sort of maintained gpu you want to leave as zero that's basically just using your primary graphics card if you do have two graphics cards in the system you can play around with this and get it to render off one of the other cards but as a standard most people will just have one card so you just want to keep that as zero and then max P frames, again, just keep that on too. You can increase it, but the more you increase it, the more likely it's going to have an impact on performance. So we recommend that you would just keep that on too. And then if we head over to recording, so if you want to record on the same PC at the same time, then you can do that through this. You just need to select your recording path and then select the format that you want to record with. Generally, for the encoding, I recommend just sticking with the stream encoder. If you find you have issues with performance on this, then I would say remove um, the recording completely and just see how it performs then. Obviously, it's going to depend on the hard drive you're recording to and that kind of thing. So it's something to test out. Um, but ultimately, a lot of this stuff is subjective to the hardware that you have in your system. So you really want to follow this guide as kind of like a, an introduction to these settings. And then as you go through, you want to see what works best for your PC. My recommendation if you're running one of the newer Turing NVIDIA graphics cards is definitely to go with NVNC. Um, you want to make sure you've got the new one selected, 6000 bitrate if you can do it. And then pretty much all these settings that I've got down here is what I would recommend going with. And then on video, I know earlier we mentioned the resolution that you want to be streaming at. So you can change that in this video panel here. So your base canvas resolution is basically the resolution of the monitor you're playing on. So you want to have that set to whatever that resolution is. In our case, it's a 1440p monitor. So it's set to that. For output scaled resolution, this is the resolution that's going to come out on Twitch. So generally, as I said, for uh, for 6000 bit rate, you want to be looking at 720p. You can bump it up to 900p, again, depending on the specs of your PC. Um, just be careful and if you have any issues with, qu with quality or performance, then maybe jump back down to 720p. For your downscale filter, have this set to the bottom one, sharp and scaling 32 samples. It just avoids any issues with blurring and that kind of thing when you're moving fast to getting games. And then FPS value, FPS type, generally have this set to common FPS values. I believe you can select integer FPS values, um, which some people say is better, especially if you're streaming at 60 FPS. I've always in the past just used common, but Potentially, if you want, you can try going integer FPS values and using 60. 
And then here, obviously, you want to set your FPS value as you desire. So that's pretty much it for this video. Basically, we just wanted to go through the options that are there for streaming at the moment. Uh, one of the things I'm really excited for at the minute is the new Ryzen CPUs and how they're going to perform in single PC streaming setups. So that's something that I want to have on this channel f in the near future. But if you guys do have any questions or there's anything that I didn't cover that you're interested in, then please leave a comment below and uh, I'll do my best to help you out with getting set up with your stream. Other than that, if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like and I will see you in the next one.